Hello guys and welcome back. Actually, today I'm adding on to some of the camping slash travel uh, things that I feel like kind of cross over. And most people are going to say that these are camping specific. However, if you've ever traveled and had to stay in a, in a hostel style or an Airbnb um, cabin or something like that, sometimes either they don't have beds or their beds don't have mattresses. They're just plain like platforms of wood and so you come across that if you were to like hike the AT or other national park trails um, for backpacking but you can also come across it while traveling um, throughout the world and so the things I'm going to cover today are sleeping pads or additional sleeping uh, layers <clears throat> to go underneath you while while sleeping so the first thing I think is more obvious is going to be just a traditional sleeping pad. So this one is not really name brand. Um, it's not high R value, but it's a full, full size, three inch, three plus inch thick foam. I think it's by Wise Owl. I'm not exactly sure. I'll, I'll leave a link to all this stuff in the description. So if you're interested, um, you can pick it up. But what's great about this is it rolls up really lightweight. And it's really strong, really durable, and very comfortable. So I was wrong. This is actually the Trekology. <clears throat> A-Loft. This thing is very squishy, very soft. Um, the only thing I don't necessarily like about it is it's not super loud, but um, it's not very wide. I think it's like 20, 20 inches wide, which is pretty standard for backpacking sleeping pads. But this, because of how light it is, and it's super quick to inflate, you can actually inflate this in 10 seconds or so with the little portable pump that I have in my um, camping, kind of camping backpacking bag or pouch. I can leave a link to that as well. Um, <clears throat> but this thing is really nice because I've slept on apartment floors and stuff with this. No issue at all. Um, obviously, you can backpack with it as well. But this is great. Toss that to the side. An additional option that I actually like to carry that isn't necessarily specific to backpacking, but this is actually Reflectix. And I made a somewhat short sleeping layer out of it. So you just lay this down underneath your pad um, or whatever. You can lay directly on this if you want, but this will help give you an additional insulation layer. It's ultra lightweight, super cheap. And I actually use this sometimes um, just to set camp up or something because I don't want to get my knees dirty when I'm kneeling down. So I can use this for that sitting on and I can also use it as a windscreen for a fire as well as insulation for um, the bag. This one, the only reason I would bring this on travel versus camping is I actually have used this as structure for lightweight backpacks. And because I could kind of put it in the back as a back panel or back padding, it just gives me dual purpose. And I have another piece um, that is very similar in that sense. So this was the first one that I kind of made, but I did buy one of these eighth inch closed cell foam pads um, that I use as very similar, <clears throat> very similar item. Um, in really cold weather, if you're camping or backpacking, you can use these together. But when you're traveling, I typically will just bring one, likely this one, because it's so lightweight and so small. It just gives me an extra layer. It helps, it helps protect the inflatable pad, but also it gives you a little bit of a distance between maybe a mattress. Um, sharing mattresses to me is a little gross, unless you're you know, family, but sleeping on a random stranger's mattress, questionable at best. So I like to have something, and this I, I can fold up very, very lightweight, slip it into the laptop compartment of most backpacks, uh, whether they're travel or hiking, and it works perfectly. Um, use this also as a picnic blanket of sorts. Um, so that's that. I have one more that I really, really like. This is definitely more of a backpack thing than a travel thing, but I'm including it here because it's the same idea. And that's the, the Nemo Switchback. So I don't, I, I like this one compared to the Thermarest. This is actually the short version of it because I don't really care about my feet all that much. It's more my torso and my head that I like to protect from it. But I like this better than the, the Thermarest because one, I like the short version, but two, 
the the actual shape of it feels a little bit more natural. These little bubbles, for some reason, are just way more comfortable. Um, I will also use this at, underneath the mattress, um, but I I would I would use this standalone too. You can use this standalone and then put your legs on your backpack if you had to. Um, not comfortable, but more comfortable than nothing. Uh, so if you're really going looking for something that's super rugged that will never pop and won't really ever fail you. This is a great option, um, but typically I would I would use this in conjunction with something else. Uh, and if it's really, really, really cold and you're sleeping on the ground, you can use all of these together. Maybe a little overkill, but depending on where you're sleeping, if you're backing your car up and you have an, a tent and, or something and you're sleeping on the ground and you just want to guarantee you're warm, all of this stuff is very lightweight, so it's just a matter of space. If you've got the space, you can toss it all in there and sleep like a king in zero-degree weather. But I think, I think these types of things are overlooked for travel a lot. Um, especially something as lightweight and minimal as this. I mean, it's near cloth. And you can toss it in a backpack so easily folded up. Um, one other thing that I do bring that's not for... It's not for sleeping, but is a little folding pad. So I used to have the actual Thermarest Z-Seat, and I've replaced it with this pad um, because the, the Z-Seat was just too big, and this is so lightweight, it can fit into a water bottle pocket on the side of a backpack, and it just gives you a nice, comfortable, soft, dry place to sit or kneel. Um, I've used this to help keep some food clean. So I, I don't use this as a cutting board necessarily, but like a prep station I will because it's foam, it's easy to clean, ultra lightweight and very compact. And honestly, this is probably my favorite budget kind of sitting pad I've had. I've had a couple, I've had an inflatable one, didn't dig it, it was really heavy. So super comfortable, but really heavy. I had the Z seat from Thermarest. Um, it was great, it was super comfortable, but I think it was just a little too big. I just didn't like the dimensions, they didn't work for me. Um, and it was a little bit bulky uh, for sitting down. I don't do a ton of that when I'm hiking or and stuff, so when I would need it. So I like to have something that is, is there, but not overly consuming of my space. But yeah, often overlooked items, I think they're, they're awesome. Um, I will leave links to everything that I possibly can. The Reflectix, you can buy at Lowe's and just cut down to size. Um, and there, I'm not gonna leave links necessarily for purchase on that. I will leave links so you know what to look for, but not necessarily, so there's not a pre-made one. It's just gonna be a roll of Reflectix. But the other guy, the other items are great, um, and certainly worth considering if you're going to do, you know, world travel or longer travel into other countries or out in the middle of nowhere. Thanks, you guys, for joining. Have a good one.